Well, another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. I guess this would qualify as a restoration blog. This is a 1968 Camaro. As you can see, pretty stock. But let's walk around the other side. Still a 1968 Camaro, just not as stock as the other side. I was confused too. It just showed up here one day. Let's find out about it together. Let's meet Earl Hauser. Earl, come on in. Now, Earl, you're with State Farm Insurance? Yes. Nice and and what do you do exactly with State Farm? Vehicle research. So okay. we're actually, 90% of the time, we're tearing down brand new vehicles to see how they're designed for repairability, theft, and safety. Oh, okay. I call it a cross-dressing Camaro. That's probably not fair, but it's, uh, it's, this side is what, custom, and that side is stock, is that? Fully restored. Say? Okay. Modified. Okay. So we're looking at the two terms where you have one that's built to OEM specifications and then the modified side where somebody has changed the car. Now, well, that's an insurance question a lot of people have. If they have a stock Camaro and they put a bunch of modifications into it, then they have an accident and they only get the stock value for the vehicle because that's what they insured it at. If someone's modified your car, you should up your insurance to equal the modifications. Would that be fair to say? And that's kind of what the training aid is. I, I mean, see. if you've done something to your car, we mm -hmm. need to know what it is. Right. Uh, and you do want to insure it properly. That, we don't want it to be overinsured, but we don't want it to be underinsured. Right. You want it to be valued properly. So we need to know what the car is and what's been done to it. So take me around this and explain what we have here. So on the fully restored side, it is a 1968 Camaro RS convertible. Right. I, have, I noticed you have a different wheel front and back. You hear they have the hubcap with the white wall. They've got the red line performance tire, wet wide. We know a 1968 for this particular car, you could order it either way. I see. It came stock with the hubcap, mm -hmm. you could upgrade to the rally wheel and the red line tire, or the dealer would swap it if you wanted red lines on your car sitting on the lot, mm -hmm. and it didn't happen at the time of purchase. I see, okay. Now this side is totally stock. Totally bone stock. Okay. Factory butternut yellow. Right. As we see though, it's over restored, so it's a base clear, which it right. wouldn't have been. Oh, okay, yeah, I didn't notice that right off. Let's see on the back here. This is a classic case of the left hand not knowing what the right hand is doing. <laughs> These two guys were mad at each other, they didn't speak, and they just restored the car this way. So this is obviously modified, spoiler, Yep. different paint. So Custom you, wheels. Exactly, and there's a lot of things going on in this side of the car. The bumper bolts are shaved. Mm -hmm. The reverse light that's on a rally sport that's in the rear valance oh, I see. is moved into the tail light for the okay. SS. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this side, all the marker lights, door handles, emblems have been shaved. Oh, the door handles, how do you get in this car? This is electronic. Oh, okay. Uh, so electronic door opening. Right, right. Uh, we added some moldings that our car didn't have. We have a cloth top. We have custom leather interior. <laughs> See. Grafted in the Super Sport hood to the right. flat hood. Were these so, ever functional? I don't remember. No, not no. functional. Yeah. Appearance item, yeah. Okay, and there's oversized wheels as well. Oversized wheels, big yeah. brakes, tubular control arms, and it goes throughout the car. Uh, under the hood, is it modified as well? Yes, it is. Let's take a look. So, the entire car is like this. Okay, so, they got aluminum heads on this side, cast iron heads on that side. Oh, well, that'll work. Yeah, it'll run a little strange. Wow, look at this, right down the center. Right huh? down the center, Pretty everything. Amazing. One off carbon fiber wheelhouse made in our shop. Right. Uh, firewall smooth. Tell me how you use it as a training aid. Our original thought was when we were looking at this, we were going to build a fully restored car and a modified car. Mm -hmm. But as you know, then you're dealing with storage, moving two cars. Sure, sure. It, it becomes a hassle. So the idea was to build both cars into one. So on this car, we went to all of our specialty underwriters who handle all of our antique and classics, which uh -huh. we call collector cars and ask them what they don't understand or what doesn't make sense to them. So we're looking at nitrous, how's it plumbed, what do we need to look for, uh, shaved door handles, what's a one-off part, uh, what's tubular control arms, what's it mean when they put bigger brakes on, what's that look like. Right. That's how we built this side of the car with all those suggestions. The other side being fully restored, I mean it's truly not a hundred point car because we put in a lot of changes mm -hmm. that this car wouldn't have had, but if you're bringing a Camaro to us and it's a $200,000 Camaro, we should have a Camaro expert look at it at some point and validate right, it right. so we can get the proper value placed on it. You say a $200,000 Camaro. Um, if I have all my receipts that I paid X for this and Y for that and they equal $200,000. Does that make it a $200,000 Camaro? Or does it, someone go, that's the ugliest thing I've ever seen. The work, if I have all the financial paperwork saying I put 200,000 into the car, 
does that make it a $200,000 Camaro from your point of view from the insurance company? So for building cars myself, yeah. we all know that a car is not necessarily worth the sum of its parts or right. the labor cost to build it. So the answer would be no. Okay. The car is worth what the market would be willing to pay for it. Okay, so when you're insuring a vehicle, it's not what you have into it. I mean, if I say I put 200000 into it, all legitimately, here's my yes. $200,000 yes. worth, I can't insure it for that value? Not that you couldn't. Is it worth that? I mean, that's the big question. Oh, I see, I see. We need to recognize, what do you have? Do you have a ZL1 Camaro? Do you have a Z28 yeah. Camaro? Do you have a base RS? That's recognizing yeah. what you have. And when you have a collector car, if you can show your insurance agent that it is a lock garage, fire systems, a battery disconnect in each vehicle, that will also lower your insurance rate is that correct there's right? definitely going to be an impact when okay. you insure it and we're going to ask you those questions right. because you know it's your baby but also if we're taking it on it's our baby right right we want to know that you do protect it and you don't right. park it with a bunch of bicycles and, right you know all those kind of things that happen. right okay so when someone is restoring a car they should keep all their receipts for the insurance adjuster correct i think photographs are just as important as receipts okay, okay. If, if you're going to insure a car like this there should be photographs of the build because the guy that built it's proud of it and we want to see the quality of workmanship Let's take a look at the interior. You know, if you're a divorced guy and you don't want to give the wife the other half of the car, this is perfect because you can have the sporty side and she can have the other side. And that's funny, when we take it to shows, yeah. some of the ladies like one side and some yeah. of them like the other. So it yeah. could go either way. You remember when I was a kid, Red Skelton used to do a skit where half his face was a man, <laughs> the other half, and he danced, <laughs> yes. and then he turned to be a woman on the other <laughs> side. And that's kind of what this is. Now, this is not a running car, obviously, right? It, no. it, it would run. <coughs> it would run. We just haven't put fluids in it, so we right. can take it into any building. I gotcha. Now, do you have uh, special agents for collector or modified vehicles? I mean, your any, average State Farm insurance agent isn't going to know necessarily the ins and outs. Correct? That's what's great about our company. I mean, we have State Farm agents everywhere, as you've probably seen right. them on all the corners. If they don't know enough, they can go to our underwriters. We have specialty I underwriters see. that handle the antique and classic or collector car. So if market. I live in a little town somewhere, then I have a heavily modified car. I would call the, the State Farm guy, and he, I, I don't know about that. Call so and so near Chicago or whatever it might be. He would he would handle the entire thing I see. through their specialty underwriters and yeah. back through us if we needed to. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, so inside the trunk is even split, just like the rest well, of the car. Can we open the trunk? Oh, Absolutely. I see. Okay. They got nitrous on this side, so that side will be going pretty fast. Yep, and it's going to break real hard to the right. Yeah. So the guys in my shop, we all did it. I built the yellow side. I took an apprentice I had who I taught how to paint and do body work, did the right. red side. Uh, and then everybody else came together to put it together. And then we have a uh, ASE master mechanic on staff who did all the mechanicals. The so your guy off. comes, he gives me an appraisal. No, you would hire your own appraiser. Oh, I hire my own, and you take that value? We would have a, oh, we would that's look at that. Insane, sometimes people get two or three appraisals because they don't like what you put. So it's not your appraiser, it's nope. my appraiser. It's your appraiser. Oh, that's pretty good. And we want to look at the photographs, you mm -hmm. know, of the build. Hopefully you have those. Right, right, The documentation right. of what parts you put in, because that does impact value. Right, right. If you'd like to see this car, it'll be at the SEMA show, and uh, you'll be answering questions and seeing what people have to say. So. Absolutely. Nice job. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Yep, we appreciate your time. See you next week.